Hey guys, welcome back to Megan Grace DIY. For today's project, I'm taking an old bra that I had lying around that was about to be thrown out, and I'm gonna cover it with some metallic stretch fabric and then spice it up with some lights and crystals. This project is great for a Halloween costume, a Bella dancing outfit, or for a standout piece at your next festival. The supplies you're gonna need for today's tutorial are a recycled bra, one third of a yard of a holographic stretchy fabric, thread and a needle, some DIY lights, some rhinestones, some glue sticks and a glue gun, and some Aileen's Julep. So here's the old bra that I'm going to use today. It got stuck in the washer and had a little hole in the foam cup, but I used some hand sewing to close it up, making it a great candidate for today's project. Our first step is going to be draping the metallic fabric over the cup. In order for this project to work, the bra you're working with has to have some kind of molding to the cup. It won't work with just your regular t-shirt bra. What I'm doing here to make it a little bit easier to drape is I stuffed the bra cup with some pillow stuffing to give me a stiffer surface to work with. Then I'm taping the bra down to the table so it doesn't move while I'm working. Just so everyone at home knows, I'm working with a 36 double D. The bigger the cup and the more curvy the surface, the more difficult the draping can become. But if you follow along, you should be okay. I cut two squares of fabric that are slightly larger than the cup. I start by laying one square over the bra with one point lined up at the strap. See how as you move away from the point of the cup, the fabric wrinkles? Our goal is to smooth all of those wrinkles down to one point at the base of the cup, which will be called the dart. So at this point, I'm focusing on that top line of the bra cup. I'm wrapping the fabric around and pinning it in place while smoothing the wrinkles downwards towards where our dart is going to be. Now I've moved to the outside edge of the bra cup. I'm gonna be wrapping the fabric around the edge and pinning it in place. Again, while smoothing those wrinkles down towards the bottom of the cup. If at any point you notice that the fabric is not going to cover the cup, you need to stop and cut a bigger piece of fabric. By this point in the draping, you should start to see all of your wrinkles come together into one big pucker of fabric at the bottom of the cup. Now that we're at the bottom of the cup, I want you to use the under wire line as your guide. You're gonna tuck your excess fabric under and put a pin along that under wire line, all while still pushing our wrinkles towards the center of the cup. At this point, all of your wrinkles should be pushed down to the bottom of the cup into one pucker of fabric. I want you to pull it tight and take a couple of pins to pin the two sides of the fabric together. I want you to do one last quick double check to make sure all your wrinkles are nice and smooth. As you unpin the fabric from the cup, when you put the pin back into the fabric, move it directly above whatever guideline you were using. So if you're using the underwire as a guideline, move the pin directly above the underwire. Once that's completed, take the excess fabric in your hand and cut it off, leaving about an extra half an inch outside of the pins. Go ahead and unpin your dart so the fabric piece will lay flat on the table. Now you're gonna start cutting on the outside of the pins, leaving about half an inch of fabric left that we'll use to turn under and stitch it to the cup. Now take your other square of fabric and lay your first pattern piece on top of it with the right sides touching, so you can now cut a mirror image for the other bra cup. Now that you've got both of your pattern pieces cut, your next step is to sew shut the dart. You can do this with a machine or by hand. Once your dart is sewn, lay your fabric cup on top of the bra. The nice thing about the stretch fabric is you can pull it a little bit to make it lay nice and smooth on top of the cup. We should now be ready to sew the fabric covering onto the bra cup. I'm starting by folding that top point under by half an inch and then taking the fabric and wrapping it around the edge of the bra then I'm pinning this in place. Mm -hmm. 
After you finish the top edges of the bra, go ahead and start folding the fabric underneath along that underwire line and pin it in place to be sewn to the actual bra. Flip the bra over and now you can begin to hand sew the actual fabric to the bra cup. I sew on a slight diagonal line and this is known as a whip stitch. You want your stitches to be going diagonally so when the bra stretches, your stitches don't snap. When you get to the strap, go back to the front of the bra and stitch down that rolled over edge to the actual strap. We'll be adding in the strap covering in a little bit. Now flip the bra back over and go ahead and continue stitching down the rolled over edge down the front of the cup. Just so everyone knows, this entire project took me about six hours to complete. So if these steps seem to be taking you a little bit of time, that's okay. When you get to the center of the bra, flip it back over and do a slip stitch right along the edge of the underwire. Once you've finished with cup one, repeat all of these steps on the opposite cup. Now that your cups are completed, we're gonna move on to the band. I cut a piece of fabric that was about four inches wide and about two inches longer than my band and I draped that on top of the actual bra. Once again, this part of the tutorial is all about making sure the fabric lays nice and smooth. You're gonna work your way down the band of the bra, pinning this new piece of fabric in place. Once the fabric is pinned in place, I flipped the bra over and began to slip stitch that bottom rolled edge to the actual bra. I'm gonna go ahead and do this slip stitch all the way down the length of the bra. When you get to the bottom of the cups, the fabric may bunch ever so slightly. That's okay, you can scrunch it in a bit as you hand sew. When all your hand sewing is done, flip the bra over and return to the front. Cut a slit right on top of your dart into the band fabric. Next, we're gonna cut away any excess fabric that will be on top of the bra cup, leaving about half an inch extra to turn under and sew onto the bra. It's better to cut less at first than more because you can always cut more fabric away. You can't wish fabric back in place. As we continue to hand sew this fabric onto the bra band, make sure you don't cover that little tab that's gonna hook your strap to the back of the bra. What I did was folded the fabric underneath itself and then hand sewed it on top of the tab. Flip the bra back over and continue to roll the fabric and stitch it down onto the bra band. When I get to a spot where two pieces of fabric meet, like the bra cup and the bra band, I take a second to stitch them together just to give the overall product a nice clean look.
When it comes to the clasp, I turned the fabric underneath itself and stitched it down. Next, we're going to move on to turning the fabric under along the underwire line. This can be slightly tricky due to the curve. So what I'm gonna show you is putting little tiny snips into the fabric in order to make it flip under easier. Again, we wanna focus here on turning the fabric under without getting any bumps or wrinkles. When I'm ready to sew the band to the cup, I use a technique called the tunnel and bite technique, also known as a slip stitch. What that means is I glide the needle through the folded edge of the band, right against that underwire line. And then when I come up, I take one little tiny bite out of the cup. This will hide your stitching and make the seam look nice and clean. Go ahead and continue stitching all the way around the edge of the cup, finishing at the top of the bra. Once both cups are done, we're ready to move on to the straps. You're going to take a tape measure and measure the length of the area that you want covered by fabric. Then I cut a piece of fabric that's about an inch longer than what that measurement was and two inches wide. In my case, it was about eight inches by two inches. To apply the strap, flip the bra over. With the back of the strap facing you and the right side of the fabric facing down, line up the right edge of the fabric and the strap. You're gonna go ahead and use that whip stitch again to stitch these two edges together all the way down the length of the strap. Moving on, we're gonna flip the bra back over to face us and wrap the fabric around the strap. But first, you're gonna flip the edge of that fabric underneath and stitch it to the cup fabric. This is gonna end up being covered by some rhinestones later, but I still like to make sure all my edges are finished off nice and clean. Now take the other edge of the strap and fold it underneath itself so it's shorter than the width of the strap. Take that whip stitch and stitch it down along the cup and then all the way down the length of the strap. I decided to stop where the fabric changes over on the bra strap just to keep that original part of the bra strap intact and make sure I had enough stretch for when I was wearing the bra. So next we're gonna move on to the light installation. I found some really good results with those little home deck lights um, that you use to fill wine bottles or for other types of craft projects, um, especially because the wire is very malleable and soft and they're very easy to sew into garments and the battery pack is really small so it's easy to hide uh, inside a garment. I've got a link to the specific lights that I used for this project in the description below. What I'm creating here is an alternating pattern along that front line of the cup. What I do is I twist the wire so it has a little bit of a stem and that makes it easier to put the light exactly where I want it to be, especially since some go along the line of the cup and then the other ones bend down a bit past the line of the cup. 
each light then gets stitched on with hand sewing. The way you sew the lights on is really up to you. If you want to be more abstract with it, you can. The reason I did this alternating pattern is because I'm gonna lay the crystals down on top of it and then the lights will make the crystals sparkle even when there's no sun out. But if you wanna do a different pattern, by all means, go out there and get crazy. As you can see from looking at the inside of the bra, there's quite a bit of leftover wire. Um, it's a good thing about these lights because there's a lot of distance between each light and you can do more things with them. But if you want the lights really close together, you do end up with some leftover wire inside the bra. You could take a piece of fabric and cover that up if that's something that you think will bother your skin. What I'm doing now is I'm tacking in the battery pack and that last little bit of wire. Do not tack this down straight because the bra cup still stretches and then the wire will pop if it's pulled straight and tight. At the front of each light string, I left a few lights unsewn so I could create a cool design in the center front of the bra. I love to be able to recycle items when making a new costume piece. So what I did here was I took some old crystal earrings and I cut the backs off and I'm using them on top of the straps and I'm gonna also use one in the center of the bra. The really pretty crystal AB stones will look nice reflected against the lights. Now I'm pulling out my handy dandy glue gun to glue some plastic teardrop crystal AB rhinestones along the neckline. Whenever you're using glue, less is more. If you need to put more on, you can, but if you put on too much, it's really hard to get it off and it can create a really big mess for your project. If you need to practice a few times on a scrap of fabric, please do so because you don't want to ruin your project in the final steps. Growing up as a figure skater, I got pretty addicted to anything sparkly. So Aileen's Julet and some Swarovski crystals are where it's at when it comes to my projects. What I'm doing now is I'm putting dots of glue along the bra line and then using a pin that has a little bit of glue on the tip to pick the stones up and put them onto the dots of glue. Next, I'm using some crystal AB stones to give some dimension to the neckline. Once again, when it comes to glue, less is more. Here's a close-up of the package of the crystals I like to use. Even though it said hot fix, I still prefer to glue on my stones by hand. I find it's a cleaner method. I know this has been a long tutorial, but once your stones have been glued on and the bra has dried for four to six hours, congratulations, you made it all the way to the end for your light up bra. I really, really hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the discussion section below. Thank you so much for stopping by Meg Grace DIY and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to get notifications for when new videos come on out. See you later. Bye.